Matthew chapter number 9. And he entered into the ship. They told him to leave. He leaves. And passed over and came unto his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy. That shows up a lot. Lying on a bed. And Jesus seeing their faith, they brought the man. Not the man that's sick, but the person that brings the man. How do you like that one? They get the guy in the car and drive him to a, 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 a healing service. Believing that this guy may be saved. The guy that was sick had nothing to do with it. Seeing their faith that they could that Jesus can do this, said on to the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven me. Now this is gonna bring some controversy coming up now. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, they're speaking to themselves. This man blasphemed. And Jesus, knowing, Luke 5.22 says, Receive, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Look at that. Jesus knows what you're saying when you don't say it audibly. Imagine if that caught their attention. How'd you know what I was? I bet you they tried to deny it. Oh, no. But did you see what he said? The thoughts, knowing their thoughts, wherefore think ye evil in your... So your thoughts are just as guilty as your actions. Get that, Christians. Please. Put your thoughts under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ before your death or the rapture. Many Christians do not realize, are not getting preached in pulpits. I've never heard this preached. Your thought life will stand before Jesus Christ. The only way it won't stand if it's under the blood. Get that, please. For whether is it easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? What kind of question is that for Jesus to ask these guys? Which is easy? You know what my question, you know what my answer would be if being a human? Neither. I can't forgive sins. I can't heal a guy of palsy the scribes he's not talking to physicians so they can't do both <laughs> that's a loaded question but they but that ye may know that the son of man that's his favorite expression and Ezekiel is called this has power on earth to forgive sin so Jesus could have said all right you're healed go off but Notice the sins cause the sickness. And be careful. I'm not saying all sickness is sins. But isn't a lot of sicknesses out there because we sin? Now, you may go somewhere and someone sneeze and cough on you and you get the flu or sick, okay? But if you're involved in certain sins that have a a series of repercussions in your life you're just reaping what you're sowing I don't know what this guy did to get palsy but he said thy sins thy sins be forgiven it God was a sinner sin caused it then said he to the sick of all he turns back to the guy that's in the bed now arise take up thy bed Luke says it's a couch, 524. And it's just, it's like a, a, a crooked kind of L. It's flat and has a little thing for, you know, to, to lean up on. That's the same kind of bed that shows up in Esther. When uh, Naaman comes on the bed, you know, trying to plead for his life with Esther. And go unto thy house. And he arose and departed to his house. Look at that. Instant healing. No non-healing. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. So Jesus is getting the credit to God, what he's doing. Well, you're doing something for God, who's getting the credit? You sounding a trumpet? 
You're disfiguring your face. Remember that? And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, tax collector. I hated man. Everybody hates the tax collector. Everybody. F Listen, I wouldn't fear if the cops came and parked in front of my house. We had the cops come here the other day. I, there was no fear. I don't. I don't. Do but if the IRS comes knocking on my door, I'm going to be scared. <clears throat> Because who knows? I could have made a, a serious, innocent mistake not knowing. Sitting in the receipt of customs, and he says unto him, Matthew, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Look at that. This is the fifth disciple. Come follow me. Okay, let's go. Not, oh, let me go bury my father. Let me, you know. There's no excuses given to the disciples of serving God. Let's go. There's no where we're going. What are we going to do? Come follow me. All right, let's go. Left his table, left whatever he had, left it. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to leave it all behind and follow Jesus, and that's walking by faith. That's the Christian duty. That's the Christian call. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at me in the house. And behold, many publicans, and these are the, these are the worthless people. And sinners. Now these are the friends of Matthew. Matthew says, "Okay, let's go. Hey, let me give you a dinner, Jesus." And came and sat down with him, Jesus, and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, "They couldn't go up to Jesus himself. Why eateth your master with publican? See how they thought about the, about the tax collectors." Why is your master with the publicans and say, Ew, look at the class of people Jesus with. Can you believe he's with those people? Ew. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, Jesus said, hey, Okay, I'll speak to you. You don't want to speak to me? I'll speak to you. They that be whole need not a physician. But they that are sick. Look what Jesus just taught. If you're sick, Seek God first, unlike Asa. Asa has a disease in his feet. He didn't seek God. He seeked the physician. You seek God. If you need medical attention, Jesus said, go to a doctor. How's that? People out there, oh, we don't go, we don't go to no doctor. We don't go to no hospital. You're violating the scripture. Jesus said, if you're not whole and you're sick, go to a doctor. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Jesus is calling himself a physician. I will have mercy. Ooh, guess the Pharisees weren't showing mercy. And not sacrifice. The Pharisees were living off the sacrifices. That was their meal ticket. For I am not come to call the righteous... He's talking to the Pharisees. They're righteous. They're clean. They're self-righteous. But sinners to repentance. I'm calling these people. I'm saying, I'm calling them to repentance just like Matthew did. You guys ain't gonna come to me. You're you're too you're just too too righteous. You're too self-righteous. You know, you can be so much prideful of who you are, what you are, your occupation. You won't be saved. You can't be saved. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? Ooh, a little contention here. You guys are having a meal in this house, and we're over here fasting. Jesus said unto him, Can the children of the bridegroom mourn? As long as the bridegroom is with. Th think about a wedding. Imagine a wedding party and everybody's oh, well, it's me. Oh, we got a, we got a reception afterwards, but we can't eat the food or the cake. Ooh. As long as the bridegroom is with them, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. There's the first prophecy that Jesus is telling the people, I'm going away. And then shall they fast. 
No man puts a piece of new cloth onto an old garment. So 16, 17 are just, just uh, proper sayings. I don't know how to explain it. For that which is put in to fill it up, taketh up the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break. The wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. Look at the word perish there. No more to be used. A man that goes to hell is no more used to God. But they put new wine and new bottles, and both are preserved. Now, I've heard the teaching on that is the New and Old Testament. Could be. I don't see any argument. I just don't know how to expel that. Or expound it. When he, sp when he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler, a certain ruler, and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. So here's a dead girl. Father comes to Jesus. And Jesus, he's at the dinner. He's having a meal. He just had a discussion with the Pharisees. Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Hey, he just leaves the Pharisees with their mouths on the ground. When he says his disciples, who else would have left? Who's throwing the party? Matthew. He just gets up, leaves his house, a whole bunch of people there, and goes off with Jesus. You ever, you ever take that in account? It's his party. It's his house. And he goes. I wonder if he was married. Or had somebody take care of the house afterward. And behold a woman which was diseased. Now we just said physicians. Sick. Which was diseased. With an issue of blood. Leviticus 15.25 12 years this woman is bleeding. This little girl that just died is 12 years old. There are 12 tribes of Israel. There's something to that. Came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. It should have been blue according to Numbers 15.38. We ever see that one? For she said within herself, she spoke in herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. That's what Jesus just spoke over here, verse 12. I'm one of the Pharisees followed too, and we are seeing a repeat in the chapter. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, she's got to be Jewish, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. We'll talk about this woman in other Gospels, Mark and Luke. Thy faith has made thee whole. What, is, what was her faith? Not even, yeah, not even dealing with Jesus. If I could just touch the border. Of, he's got holy clothes. <laughs> Never mind the faith of a mustard seed. Just give a little touch of his hem. That's not much of a hem to be touched. Thy faith has made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. Instantly. And over here we saw in verse 9, we saw faith of two people that brought a sick man. We're getting an understanding of faith that we don't understand. Faith is a big move. Faith is when you're going to walk with God and in front of you is a dark, dark path. And you don't know that foot if you put down is going to be a, a pit or solid ground. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. She doesn't know what's going to happen. She just believes. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise. These are people who are paid professionally to cry and to boo-hoo at a funeral. 
<laughs> they make such a lavish of funerals. It's just, listen, the guy, the person has died. You can't do nothing more for him. He said over here, let the dead bury the dead. Follow me. Yes, you're going to tear. You don't need to pay anybody. But somebody wants money from something. He said unto them, give place. Ooh. Here's a bunch of people that, you know, the girl has died. He walked in, give place. What would Jesus do? For the maid is not dead. Uh, the father said she's dead. But sleepeth. And sleeping is what the Bible says about saints of God who have died. You don't die. Later on, Jesus is going to say, listen, God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You don't really die. You just put the, the body in the ground and your soul goes to heaven or it goes to hell. You're living. That is life after death. And they laughed at what happened to the crying. They laughed him to scorn. Somebody put the onion away and stopped crying. Wouldn't you be happy if someone you love was dead in your room? This is what they, the body's in the house. Wouldn't you love that here's this guy is doing the healing. Here's this wonderful guy is walking around. To, he has come into your house and he said, listen, that little girl's not dead. Wouldn't that make you happy? These people had no faith. What has it been? It's been faith, faith, faith. What do these people have? No faith. And when the people were put out, or put forth, excuse me, get out of here. You're going to laugh at me? Get out. You know what God's going to do to all the mockers of his word? Get out. Depart from me, ye work. Sound familiar? When you have somebody who laughs at you because of a public witness, whatever you do for Jesus, evangelist, don't mock that guy. Don't make, don't go into church the next day and make fun of that guy. Don't feel the message of someone that laughs at you. You better pray for them. Because Proverbs says God will laugh at them. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Resurrection. And the fame there, hereof went aboard into the land. <laughs> CNN, live. Newspapers. We'll get more. It'll be more in the next Gospels. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men. Every time I read, I want three blind mice. Followed him. Um, two blind men follow him. How do they know where to follow him? They're blind. Crying and saying, Thou son of David. Acknowledging who this king is. You see, Matthew is about Jesus Christ, the king. Who is David? He's the king of Israel. Saul wasn't acknowledged by God as a king. The foundation of the Jewish king by God is David. Have mercy on us. They are asking the king of the Jews, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came, came to him. And Jesus says unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord, more faith. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Now why does that not happen in healing services today? Why does that not happen in a healing tent? Who do they acknowledge Jesus Christ as? The son of David, the king of David. What does that tell you? It tells you it's Jewish, it's Israel. Who requires signs in the Corinthians? Jews. You know why the healing signs and the healing tents don't work? Because we're not Jews. 
We are in a dispensation called the church age. This stuff does not work during the church age. It works through the book of Acts. Who are they dealing with? Jews. Why did a sign of tongues happen to Cornelius? The Gentile, the Italian. To tell Peter and the Jews that God is now working with the Gentiles. Cornelius speaking tongues was a sign to a Jew named Peter. See, when you go in there by faith, by faith, these people are healed. Be healed. Jewish, 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 king of, king of Israel, the son of David. Jesus Christ is, is titled a son of David, king of Israel, has no concern of mine. He's my savior. He's my husband. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightway charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they departed, spread abroad his fame in all the Every time Jesus tells them, Don't tell anybody, they go out and open their big mouth. You can't stop them. Only in 2016, Christianity, if someone gets saved, they'll never say anything to anybody. I got saved on a Saturday. Sunday afternoon, I began witnessing. I could not shut my mouth. I got me a fistful of tracks. I went out giving them out. If you don't witness and open up your mouth like, like Romans 10, I, I call your question of your salvation. Because, he, <coughs> because Jesus spoke to these guys and said, don't say nothing. They go out speaking. Look what Jesus did to them. You say, why would Jesus do that? The Pharisees are mad at him. And watch what happens. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. Devil. Dumb means you're unable to speak. Devil possession. Blinded. This is the condition of Israel when Jesus comes. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spank. And the... Uh, I hate when they do that. They put half a word on one page and the other half on the other page. The multitudes marvel. The people are marveling. What is going on here? Saying, it was never so seen in the church. That's not what it says. Have you got it not yet? Nine chapters, Israel, Jews. Now watch this. This is why Jesus told him, don't go out and publicize. But the Pharisees said, now mark this down. He casts out devils through the prince of the devil. The Pharisees have now begun in this chapter rejecting Jesus Christ. They are now become an adversary and now calling him Satan. The prince of the devils is Satan. They just called Jesus Satan. Now things have changed. Now the people, now the, the Pharisees and everybody, now are going to start rejecting him. The Pharisees are going to be full charge to make sure. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue. That's their place of worship. And preaching the gospel of salvation through the blood of the atonement. Absolutely not. Of the kingdom. What's the good news? There's a kingdom coming. You're going to get that land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is good news to a Jew. To a Jew in Matthew's time. You can go to heaven and go to New Jerusalem. Who cares? I want Zion. I don't want New Jerusalem. We weren't promised that. We were promised this land. That's what we were promised. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. How do you get these healers that don't do every? But when he saw the multitudes... Yeah, he's got everyone following him. How come people don't crowd around you at, at the at the farmer's market? A cop asked one day. Because I don't have the power of healing. 
I don't have the signs. I just have the word. And the word is the truth. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Is that what John 17, 17 says? Well, who in the world in America today wants the truth? That's why I don't have the crowds. But if I were to have the signs of healing, which I won't, I can't, I'm not going to have, let me say that. But if I had that, wouldn't you think that my name would be spread across Daytona Beach? If I could heal people 100%, I can't, I will not, and don't have that power. I want to make sure that I'm saying that. Don't you think people would be surrounded around my house? They're coming to Jesus because he's, he's doing things for them. He's going to feed 5,000 people and then they're going to say, we want more. But he says, you didn't come because of the word. You came because your book, your belly's full. These people are not coming with the good news that Jesus said. They're coming with the good news. We're going to defeat Rome. We're going to get our land. We're going to kick the Arabians out. It's going to be the Jewish nation all over again. That's what they want. That healing of disease and all that, that's what's going to happen in the millennium. When the curse is removed. Problem is, why didn't it come? They rejected him. They already got the, the Pharisees, the religious people. They've already got them calling him Satan. Now, you think if you're going to call Jesus Christ Satan, you think he's going to do a work in your life? But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. So Jesus cared. Because they fainted. They fainted. They were not eating. They were not healthy. They are falling down in the streets. And were scattered abroad. No one's taking care of them. The Pharisees, the scribes, the pastors, the priests are not taking care of the people. They don't even know where they're going. So you know what Jesus calls these group of people in, in John chapter 10? You're a bunch of sheep. What's he saying? You're a bunch of dummies. I've been told by a sheep guy one time. I don't know what you call it. Sheep herder. He said, he's taking care of sheep. I was at one of these, these, these fairs with animals. I said, let me ask you a question. I heard this story, and he said, it's true. You can have a fence with a gate. And you can move that gate a couple feet over to the left or right of where the gate was. A new gate. Move it. And that sheep will stare there and look at the gate like, what's that? What am I supposed to do? And, that, and the sheep herder told me, he said, that's, they'll look at a new gate, even though it's just a couple feet away from where, they'll look at it like, what do I do? And that feeding trough or that barn, wherever they stay, wherever the other sheep are, could be right there on the other side of that fence, and then that sheep will sit there like, hmm? And that's what these people are. They don't know what's going on. The Pharisees have got them all messed up. You know how messed up they got him? <coughs> they got him? This is when God sent his son down for him. As sheep having no shepherd. Read, read John 10 on that. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. I don't even know if you can count them. But the laborers are few. Now, as far as we know, because we never see the calling of of uh, Judas. And we don't really. But as far as right now, we know. There are five disciples, right? At least. And they can't handle all the people. At least five. If he's got all twelve. The next chapter, he does name all 12. But I don't know if he's got all 12 right now. But the laborers are few. 
Now, let's look at something here. We'll, we'll, let's look at chapter 7 to 13 again. Let's look at the word few for a minute. This is an interesting Bible word. Enter ye the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads in destruction, and many be which go there. And that's the lost people. Many will get lost, many will be lost, many will go to hell. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find. Few people will get saved of the whole world population. Now watch this. Go back to chapter 9, verse 37. Then he says to the disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Not only do a few people get saved, the fewer the people that got saved are going to do the work. Paul witnessed and started a whole bunch of churches. And the letters he writes to some of these churches, they're giving him a hard time. The one that founded and built their church and brought them to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And to one church he says, have I become the, the, your enemy because you, I speak the truth to you? I'm not quoting that verse completely. Few will get saved and then the few will do what Jesus tells them to do. And I've seen that many times. I have been in churches where I have gone with one other person and that's the only people that went knocking on the door or any kind of evangelistic work. I've been in churches where the pastor is just going out to do something and no one else. But if you have a fellowship with hot dog, oh boy, you bring them all out of woodwork. Pray ye. Now watch this. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Not the church. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people that are dying and going to hell in India. Lord God, will you send somebody over there? Lord, there's people in China, they can't get the gospel. The country has forbidden them to get the gospel. I know there's people over there. Lord, will you send people over there? That's what we're supposed to be praying about the mission field. But instead, churches and seminaries and all, they send the people out. And they send them out false gospel and, and junk and, and doodads and shoeboxes and sadist prayer and magic and uh, everything else. But God's sending them. 